Thank you. So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Shovik uh, Banerjee. Um, I'm the global leadership on IoT and um, digital and omni-channel for the products and platforms. I lead the architecture and technology space. Uh, based out of UK for the past two decades, but out of the last two decades, this year I've been seconded out to India for our big major conglomerates. 4G launched their marketplace and another conglomerate's marketplace coming into the picture. Hence, this year has been the most enriching and exciting year um, in a career spanning 20 years. So today we'll focus on fundamentally two areas. So how is technology, and agnostic to a brand, whether it's IBM, Microsoft, Oracle, or SAP, how is technology enhancing the customer experience? And what we see from a pan-customer belt agnostic to a vertical industry, what we are seeing are the strategies marketing uh, domains are getting explored. It was a fabulous panel conversation where we could see here two ends of the spectrum hearing why Facebook is you know, kind of becoming a, or taking a back seat and why the other younger lot are looking into and uh, getting into other products and platforms. So, but it all comes back to at the end of the day, the marketing tools or the technology tools are to ensure your customers needs, complaints or your satisfaction is met. So I'll place a video because this video, what we are trying to see is uh, feedback from across domains of SAP's clients all over the world, where we see the next generation of digital. And, and um, I, saw, uh, I saw Andy's uh, presentation, and it actually showcases, yes, where is it going? So I think what we have found out from an uh, overall survey is they all have a dream. They don't know how they want to transact because it's so disruptive right now but they definitely want to transact, they definitely want to engage, they definitely want to talk and converse about all the digital needs. So let's play the video and, and let's achieve and see where the dream is expected from technology companies meeting experience. You could think you of your customers as an anonymous crowd, an undetermined bulk of user IDs, faceless and unknown, who you just communicated to in blast and blasts of ads and emails, the customer in a black box. Let me tell you, it is not true anymore. The traditional rules of marketing, of sales and service, of how you deliver experiences just do not work anymore. Each customer journey is unique and complex, but now you need to pay attention. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day businesses will deliver real-time, contextual experiences to me. I am your customer, not just someone you claim to know because you have my email. I have a life and I change. My interests change. I have a dream that all customers will be engaged in a relevant way from digital to physical and back, merged into one harmonized experience based on what I need now, right now. From this day forward, the oppression of customers has come to an end. We are in control, and you will listen. You will adapt. This is not incremental evolution. This is a revolution in how customer experiences work. to the presentation please so ultimately we are facing with a biggest of challenge see we are all talking about mobile first but no we are a completely omni channel right now where people are transacting banking through apps on tablets on smart TVs on mobiles as well and with the optical fiber country we are becoming the fundamental difference between a world where we live in a 3G world and the world where we will become a completely optical fiber nation, the difference is your channels are growing with every year. Digital goods are coming across. Your IoT space, which is where we are focusing, is kind of overlapping with omnichannel. 
uh, a connected car, a connected fridge, wearables are starting to have a major impact of how omni-channel journeys are getting created every year. So what we saw and what we are facing right now from a technology perspective or a technology giant's perspective and seeing where customer experience and engagement meets and changes strategies of marketing is what we're going to quickly have a, have a, have a discussion today about. So what we're saying is there is a digital imperative. What is the general digital imperative? So it's, we know it's changing the world. So about, by 2018, we are expected to have 19 billion wearable devices. 98% uh, of consumers move sequentially between passive and active screen. So a passive screen could be an iPad sitting around while you're watching your TV, which is mostly smart nowadays, or you're moving between a wearable, either a wearable watch or your Fitbits to a BMI monitor between gadgets. 80% of consumers are more likely to recommend a brand that offers a simple experience rather than a brand which offers you a complex consumer journey. So that's where a certain few brands from where we put across platforms overall in a public domain, we see that. Reviews and word of mouth are increasing their influence on consumer trust. Uh, it's very important how social listening has impacted this piece of work. Um, I saw one of the key speakers saying that how Twitter manages their complaints. That is a day-to-day -day story in UK, Europe, and North America for all airlines, for all of your train services. And starting in Indian railways and banking, Twitter manages their bulk of not only complaints, even great reviews. Uh, social listening is becoming a key area. Twitter rides the trend now. But we see all sorts of social platforms getting the listening capability right. Again, a technology being used to ensure customer success and add value. Four of the top five global brands are digital at the core. Uh, that's, not a, that's not news anymore. And Amazon and eBay are the only pure play retailers on this list. And of course, you must have seen how uh, uh, automobile company doesn't have inventory, example Uber, how a uh, hotel industry's giant which is riding on the top of the ladder like Airbnb does not have their own inventory. So this is how, how do you disrupt and engage and compete from a technology space we feel this challenge all the time in all of our digital transformations. So this is just to give you the global, global data in terms of what all of this commerce and IoT is looking like in an India subcontinent context. So we've got around B2C e-commerce sales in Asia and Pacific, Asia Pacific by 2017 expected to be 1052.9 billion. 37.4% B2C sales worldwide is expected to be from this region in by 2018. Now let's see this. If that has to happen, where India is going across, whether Amazon has made a loss in the last quarter or not, the numbers in terms of the marketplace do not impact revenue. So that has to happen. And this data is collected from AC Nielsen, Accenture, Gartner, most of them. So there is a trend where volumetrics is becoming and impacting overall digital revenue and profit. And how does a technology help that consumer experience. As we see, Netflix is already signed up and is getting launched in India with Hotstar, with another three sets of video on demand areas. 25 towns expected to have 8 to 10 megabyte broadband will be consumer belt. All of what you currently see in India is right now 2% of the overall population transacting. So 45 million people are overall transacting, digitally getting enabled out of 1.3 billion. 900 uh, towns are expected to have over 800 million people. 900 towns penetration can only happen when India becomes an optical fiber country for this digitization to take place. Right now, we are a 12 to 25 city digital country. We are not a 900 town digital country to the extent where 3G's 
enablement is getting down to the wire level of optical fiber. We are seeing and we are right now not only seen an Apple Watch, we have come across with Moto, we have come across with Samsung, and now we have our India's answer to that, Titan Juxt. Unless you don't know what it is, it is fundamentally India's answer to the smart watch. And Juxt basically syncs up with iOS and Android like Moto does. Already trying to talk to the pharma industry as that space is opened up. Already talking to the wearable healthcare devices. And of course, the great Uberization. What Uberization meant and has challenged technology companies like us is they expect the fastest finger fast, first order fulfillment in any B2C or B2B mold. So you create your traditional platforms over the years for multi channel. You always heard that word multi channel about two to three years back, and now it's all omni channel because your channels have improved. But the technologies behind bearing engagement is still catching up, whereas the market and the consumer's demand is out there. So that's where the challenge is. What Uber has done is right now people in the carrier industry, people in general retail, telcos becoming retailers are asking, and Carphone Warehouse is one big example, is people like Globe Telecom in Philippines, people like... Uh, Reliance Geo working on the fact that how do you fulfill a customer's need and respond and confirm an order when they're used to Uber confirming, confirming an order within three minutes. See, the mindset of a normal user or a normal customer does not work like a mindset of a technology man or a marketing man. They want, if I have got to order, when can I track my order and who's the local vendor or the local warehouse which will fulfill my need. So the expectation are set for technology giants and how we are expected to perform and ensure consumer experience is seamless is the key to having a roadmap of digital marketing or normal marketing strategy right now. And the payment gateway and the payment banks worlds opened up for all the wallets. There's about more wallets in this country than there is in Asia. Uh, and how does wallets talk to every possible marketplace where you are accounting to? and every possible online retailer where you're expected to integrate. So I, if I, am, I have an account with Airtel Money or Paytm, can I transact in 25 sites across the country who are not integrated? So that's why my challenge is that all of these wallet options are working like payment gateways, but the consumer at the end of the day expects a retailer or a telco or a manufacturer to have 10 wallets integrated. But it's a system challenge. So some digital realities we can't escape. They are empowered. Engagement is on their terms. It's not on how the traditional good old customers used to form a capex budget for marketing or a capex budget for IT and roll it out and work towards. Now the engagement is on their terms. So more agility in terms of how flexible my quarter by quarter budgets are getting rolled out is what we see. Platforms and devices are changing the playing field. This is, a, this, is a, this is a line which we have seen all day today. And there is a new face of competition. Brick and mortar retailers becoming omni-channel is the traditional route, and then you have digital retailers. So there is a digital retailer and the new startup hubs of the subcontinent, which is giving a fair amount of challenge across to the brick and mortar retailers. Brick and mortar retailers are empowered because their fulfillment is their biggest strength. But digital retailers are empowered because the overhead cost of IT and general overhead are far low. So it's a, it's a, it's a catch-22 for a marketeer or a technology company to solve that problem. And are we prepared? So what are your future customers and influences? I keep hearing from all the conglomerates, whether it's in Asia Pac or in, in Europe, or in South America, where, um, where we are seeing a lot of traction and very similar to India, is do we know our future customers and influences? Because the world of mobility and the world of multi purposes of channels which are surfacing your needs have opened up. And who, who are your influences now? 
how do we delight our customers anywhere and every time that all also depends on where you are accessing what platform or what site from and who are your future competitors and partners who needs to become your affiliate affiliate network who are your next generation of mobile affiliates who are your next generation of uh, white labels who you would want to partner as a co-branding that's very very important and what businesses are you really in are you changing your model so these questions are being asked on every terms when we are talking to most of our customers when we are engaging and rolling out their transformation for our platforms the business imperative is to achieve now right now is customer relevance at scale uh, I keep saying a little story that on a boxing day sale in the US and in Europe um, we used to be the biggest challenge and I have spent days and years on a 26th morning in a data center trying to build up capability of physical servers and memory because I had too much traffic but now we have in this country uh, 100 million people logging into a Diwali sale, a Ganesh Chaturthi sale. I have it on Dasera. Every two months we have a festival. We are a country of festivals and we are running a flash sale. So can we meet the scales? There is a huge cost impact on whether it's on cloud or whether it's on premise, your infrastructure, but you are, you are expected to gear up. Where are you finding the balance? And if you want to do that campaign with marketing, are you keeping IT and marketing in sync with the leadership of the company? So this is a challenge I am facing over the last two years where every flash sale in India is expected to be discussed three months in advance. You plan and then you build up your IT infrastructure because that flash sale will run for four days or five days and then they will have to scale down. So what used to be the story of a Boxing Day sale is becoming a story every two months. So that's the iceberg concept. What we have seen from a technology influencing consumer experience is you delight your customers fundamentally by seeing how they choose the marketing strategy on the channels they intend to invest. And reorient your business. I'm not changing the business model. When we say reorient your business, what we are saying is are we doing a month in month out especially for India are we doing a month in month out stickiness strategy from marketing and ensuring that the technology is scaled up if I am running a campaign across all my social networks and my affiliates is my CRM ready to in embrace and absorb 60,000 customers on a Monday morning between 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. That's where the technology tools are becoming essentially extremely important. And flex your platform. Gone are the days where you will say, my platform is rigid. My platform scalability, a change request will take you two months to be delivered. No, we don't have time. Two months, then my next flash sale is going to come. On a production live banking site, or a retailer site or whether it's a B2B platform for dealers and distributors nobody is waiting so how flexible is your platform which without impacting X thousand and lakhs from a physical infrastructure can cater to your marketing needs so what we have seen traditionally and where the enhancement is coming we'll spend a minute on this so there is direct marketing ongoing for most of the omnichannel brick and mortar retailers which are moving into the IOT space of a connected fridge, kiosk, in-store application, uh, 3D augmented reality. That is there. But the campaign management from what we are asked to do as a technology company on our platforms are changing on a regular basis. It pains me, but email campaigns, what I have seen over the past 16 months, are kind of becoming redundant what it is making is your product detail page URL being broadcasted across networks to ensure that traffic is there your product list page your 
targeted segmented facets on the left hand dynamic navigation becomes traditionally a grid based applications now so that is where we are focusing on that is where a marketing team would come back and say to the technology team talk to SAP or talk to Microsoft or IBM or Oracle I want to invest on fundamentally my search algorithms I want to invest on advanced personalization on my search so tools and technologies of search becoming more and more relevant hence you see Google's commerce search now being extensively used across multiple omnichannel programs social and personal relationships goes back to listening and how what listening data in the pure world of analytics is churning out to be gone are the days of old school data warehouses what we are saying will generate reports after two days and X number line items no you want to see a real-time dashboard running into in front of your customer service agents on the shop floor in your stores giving you what's the data what is the engagement what type of stickiness are they interested semi interested or did they convert and when he walks into the store how much do I know about is he a recurring customer did he showcase was he a historical customer so that sort of insight is becoming extremely important and channels to consumer we are always talking about and the order management and fulfillment piece where it has an impact from marketing is the data for order management does not send any more data only to your financial reconciliation right now not only to your CRM's of the world anymore it is going back to the marketing tools back again because a recurring order from an individual who is bought four times to the guy who's buying it second time makes the difference so these are the areas where we see continuous shift happening is newer services new geo services are coming across replenishment and forecasting changing in terms of strategy in terms of the technology and where marketing is joining hands and global inventory visibility all the time from a b2b or a b2c retailer or a, or a manufacturer uh, fundamentally we ought we are focusing on localization in India's context pin code serviceability is extremely key people in India have a demand of I need delivery or I'll pick it up we are not a postcode generation we are not a zip code generation where dedicated houses are they aligned to a single house we are a pin code area and pin code serviceability in India's towns and cities are the biggest challenge which the retailers are trying to crack including the including Amazon and Flipkart uh, that's where the brick and mortar world still exists and will play a big part in India is what our expected view is so seamless cross-channel always information coming back to marketing teams from technology tools service excellence always being spoken about not how good I did or how high quickly I handled my complaints but how much did I add value and broadcast that message in my next marketing campaign end-to-end -end business process change and flexibility to that and scalability and flexible systems for flash sales and newer functionalities who are now expected to become so if augmented reality is a fashion and a apparel retailers new functionality who has thought of it first so that becomes important so that lets me to finish my presentation uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free or else I can go and have my coffee